Many of you probably know how this feels. You finish a new project and you already know exactly what you would do differently. That's what happened when I completed my Phantom animatronic and it only got worse while I was working on Jack Sparrow. So I decided to go back to the drawing board and see how I could improve the Phantom. One of the main things I wanted to upgrade was the horizontal torso movement. Until then, the whole upper body rested on a custom servo horn with small bearings acting as wheels. While this effectively reduced the required force to turn the body, it was a very loose construction that would result in some shaky movements. On top of that, there were also way too many cables making it harder to turn. I started by taking the upper body and the servo horn apart. My new solution is based on a tapered roller bearing which supports both actual and radial forces. This means that the torso will still spin easily even with the weight of the upper body pressing down on the bearing. I designed a simple ring to house the bearing and went with differently sized gears to reduce the output speed. This increases the smoothness of slower movements as the servo has to rotate faster. Once I finished my design, I sliced the new model using Cura and 3D printed it with my Ender 3. The next step was to press the outer ring of the bearing into the new part. After placing the actual bearing and inserting the geared axis, I already noticed how much sturdier the spinning torso would be. To attach the small gear to the servo, I trimmed one of the original servo horns and sanded down the remaining cap. I then applied some super glue and pressed the cap into the 3D printed gear. After assembling the remaining parts, I was able to test the movement with my self-made servo tester. The second component I wanted to upgrade was the neck. My previous design was only a two-axis mechanism, which was also quite shaky. Now my plan was to go for a three-axis neck mechanism, similar to what I had already built for my Jack Sparrow animatronic. Thanks to a newer version of my Blender add-on, I was able to update the 3D model and make use of inverse kinematics. This allows me to focus on controlling the head, while Blender calculates the required positions of the two neck servos automatically. To make the neck sturdier this time, I used a steel rod and cut it to the required length. I also grinded down the top section of the rod into a D-shape. This allows the screws for the universal joint to grab on more tightly. I continued to assemble the rest of the 3D printed parts, most notably the servo brackets to hold the two neck servos. To allow for easy spinning I used the standard bearing which perfectly fits the diameter of the rod. The servo horns were then connected via threaded brass rods. I used some ball and socket joints which could simply be screwed on. After putting everything together, I moved on to improve the cable management. My plan was to install a second PCA9685 module right inside the Phantom's body to allow for shorter servo cables. To use multiple of these modules, I had to solder one of the address jumpers on the additional module. I also soldered on some headers and was ready to attach it to the upper body. I was now able to clean up the mess of cables in the wooden base, as not all servo cables needed to go all the way down anymore. I could pull out quite a lot of extension cables which really freed up the base and made it easier to reach everything. Apart from the servo cables, I also wanted to improve my general wiring by building some terminal blocks. I simply used some terminal strips and bent a wire to connect all units. After crimping the power cables, I then connected both the positive and negative terminal blocks to the main power supply. Some of the Phantom's most important movements are related to his arms. I felt that my original design was not sufficient enough to mimic the gestures of luring guests into his coffin. Back then, I thought there wasn't enough space to add another servo, which would allow the upper arm to spin horizontally. Additionally, there weren't enough ports on the servo driver board. Now having a second driver board allowed me to redesign the arms and eventually add the missing servo. On top of the more technical upgrades, I also wanted to do something about the box, which was completely covered in plaster. In the meantime, I realized that I would prefer a clean edge between the sides and the top of the box. So I began to remove the plaster and put on some wood filler where necessary. To create some speaker grills, I used a simple trick in the 3D slicing tool Cura by choosing an option to print only the infill of a thin disc. Using a grid pattern, I received the perfect speaker grill right off the 3D printer. Just as for Jack Sparrow, I also wanted to add a sign with the attraction name to the front of the box. 
The sign of Phantom Manor differs a bit from that of the Haunted Mansion and I couldn't find the ready-to-use 3D model online. Therefore I had to sculpt the sign myself in Blender using a graphics tablet. After printing, I added a few layers of paint until it looked just right. I then painted the box black and attached the sign as well as the speaker grills. The last visual upgrade was to adjust the color of the Phantom Skull. Originally, I went with a cream colored skull to mimic the color in the attraction with all the show lighting in place. However, the actual color is more of a metallic bronze as can be seen in the making of video about the 2018 Phantom Manor refurbishment. After some finishing touches on the animation and the costume, it was time to see the upgraded Phantom in action and compare him to his previous version. I personally think that these adjustments really help to make the Phantom operate more reliable and get his animation even closer to the original. Besides that, I was also able to improve my Blender add-on and introduce a live mode, making it even more fun to animate animatronics with Blender. Be sure to subscribe for a dedicated video about this cool new feature and thank you so much for watching.